Hey guys, what's up? Brent Calmer from Blue Water VST. I want to do a brief introduction to Drone E, which is Antonio Blanca's newest reactor creation. This is kind of an atmosphere generator that really stretches the bounds of, of that classification. It's an extraordinary instrument, and for those of you who are familiar with reactor, you might think of it as kind of a, a mix between scanner, which is a sample scanning ensemble, and space drone, which is a, a drone generator uh, that's part of reactor's factory content. But what I want to do in this video is just give you uh, two or three kind of starting points because it's a very complex and very deep ensemble and you can be overwhelmed just by looking at it. But I find that if you have a, a foothold in a, a couple of the or a few of the different uh, parts of the interface, it can really get you going and get you enjoying this ensemble. So let's just take a brief view, view of uh, a few of the different elements here. The best place to start in Drone is, of course, the initialize patch. And this allows us to hear Drone kind of at its most basic. So if I play a key, hear this low crackle. Now Drone e contains four voices and you see them represented here. Uh, each of these boxes is subdivided between four voices with vertical sliders for each. Drone e is sample based which means that it is using samples as kind of the raw material of its sounds and this waveform display at top left illustrates how the playhead is moving through the sample at a given point in time. Now if I double click on this I can access the uh, the sample map itself that contains the samples that Drone e is using and I can click on these and move through them. So you hear it's a very diverse lot, great raw material for, for Drone E. I'm going to close this out and show you how to do this within Drone E, how to move through the samples within Drone E. Now this first, this first box is of course sample, and for each of Drone E's four voices I can click on this and move it up or down thereby activating a different sample. Now what I'm going to do is solo this first voice just by clicking on this solo and you can solo any of these voices by clicking on this lower toggle. But you hear as I move through these it is pulling different samples from the map. And you can see that the sample value, that the number of the uh, sample in the map, is represented by this value field as I move through. What else is interesting here is that you can set a sample minimum and maximum. So right now we're moving through the entire range of the sample map because our, our minimum is set to 0 and our maximum to 103. But I could crank this up to say uh, 70 as a minimum. You see that the waveform display changed here. And as well, when you come down here and drag this all the way to its minimum, it is now 70 instead of 0. So it kind of uh, automatically adjust to whatever minimum and maximum you've placed up here. Now let's take a look at this box next door and this is where we get into some of the uh, position modulation. This is pretty crucial in Drone E. This is where you tell the ensemble how to move through the sample itself. So this box represents speed on the vertical axis. The higher up I move this, the faster it's going to move through that sample. And you can see the progress down here on this modulation wave section, these four stacked rows. Now these are interesting because what these allow you to do is to modulate the, the position itself, the playhead position, by using a given wave. So if I wanted to use a saw wave, I could click saw, and that would be just applying to the first voice now. And you see that now our slider has, tr has turned into a bipolar control. Now it goes both up and down, and you see that that playhead, as the progress through the sample shows that, that it's kind of going back and forth based on where I put the modulation. Now here's prob probably the most interesting part of this section, is that you can click and drag on this on the, both the left and the right hand side, and confine your position modulation to a specific subsection of the sample. So we could click and drag this over here, bring up a different sample to make this a little more obvious. And you'll see that the higher up I bring this slider, the faster this will move through. Now the smaller you make this brace, the longer it's going to take to get through there. And if you have position modulation off, this left-hand side will set the start point 
of the playhead. You see it's picking out a different part of the sample there. And of course position modulation can also be set to you know, a, a random one or a, a one shot that just goes one and then stops. So I explain this not because I think you should understand exactly how to to modulate the playhead position for all of these voices and, and create the exact result you want, but so that when you look at these snapshots, you understand why the why these these rows look different, right? That some of them move and some of them don't. The reason that some of them move in this case is because we have position modulation active for both the first and the fourth voice. We turn that off and you see those bars go away. Very interesting indeed. Now as a final step let's take a look at this uh, modulation matrix down here at the bottom and get a sense for how this works with uh, with this section up here. Now here's where things get cool. We've only looked at the first page of controls here. Now each one of these pages has a different set of parameters. So we've looked at sample speed and, uh, and play speed, essentially. For the others, however, there are modulation possibilities that are controlled from this mod matrix down here at the bottom. Now this looks very confusing, but it's actually very, uh, very well laid out once you, once you kind of figure out what the principle is. So let's take pitch modulation. And this, is, it, this page contains, the second page down contains both the pitch and the grain length modulation. And you see already for grain length, you see this modulation happening this, as this shaded bar moves up and down. But let's take a look at pitch modulation. And what I'm going to do is turn off uh, the modulation, and diffuser is a reverb. I'm going to turn that off and just get a sense for how this sounds. So it's pretty low key. There's a the sound we can hear, and of course that amp, the amp envelope has a very high attack. Turn that down a bit. And now what we're going to do is modulate the the uh, pitch by coming down here to our mod matrix and making sure we have our pitch modulation active for the first voice. For each of these, you can toggle them on or off by clicking on the label, and then you click on the individual voice to turn the modulation on. Now in this case, we're using a sawtooth wave. The frequency is set here, the depth of the modulation is set here, and the offset, essentially where that, where that modulation is beginning from, is set here. Now stay with me, because the, we're going to get into doing this, and, and it's a little confusing when you look at it from here, but keep your eye on this bar. Now as I, as I play a key, I can bring this up, and you see that beginning to increase in speed the higher up I bring this. You'll also notice that when I bring up the depth, now it's really now it's really rocking back and forth with that modulation. You see it's moving in a much larger, and you hear that pitch modulation, right? It's it's raising and lowering the pitch using a sine wave uh, based on these on these uh, configurations. And that offset kind of gives us the starting point. Now grain moves, grain works on the same principle. So if you uh, use grain modulation here, you see that you can modulate in the same way with frequency, depth, and using this offset. And of course you can clear out all of these just by clicking on this clear toggle. So this is really, really fascinating stuff. Now my, my goal in doing this video was not to give you an exhaustive understanding of, of Drone E, but just to get you kind of understanding what you're looking at when you load this up and you take a look at some of the snapshots. So hopefully we'll get a chance to go into some of this in more detail. But I think you have a few things now that you can kind of get in there and root around and start understanding uh, different parts of Drone E. And of course, the best thing to do while you're doing this is to click on the info hints so that those are always active and you can hover your mouse cursor over any of these parameters and understand exactly what they do because they're very good info hints in here. So that's Droney. You should uh, definitely take a chance. Go over to AntonioBlanca.com and download this. It's absolutely free. It's an unbelievably good ensemble. 
and uh, it, and use your own samples with it. That's the other thing that's fun to do is create your own sample map and get going with your own samples. So hopefully you found this enjoyable. Uh, I always say that, but I, I, I find this ensemble really enjoyable and I hope you do too. Uh, talk to you again soon. Take care.